All right, everybody. Um, this video is more about asking uh, some questions. I still have some things I'm trying to think out ahead of time. So one of them is the trim control in the uh, jet ski sits on the uh, um, left side of the boat and it's pretty good size. You know, I got big hands, but that's that's a pretty good size unit. So that baby is what these, these shafts are coming out of. This is basically essentially an electronic gearbox. And you know you have two two linkages coming off of it. And the um, this essentially is a piece that you don't use off of the jet ski. Um, essentially your pump adapter that I bought from RSR is gonna be in the location that this is in. So measurement wise, off of here, you know, back to your shafts, you know, and your height, all that has to be determined. But this, this unit that you just saw inside has to sit right here. You know, and this thing has electronic um, trim control. It's not, it's not a manual lever. And there's a lot of wires going that thing. I believe it, you know, it would like throw a code if it wasn't hooked up and functional. Um, there was also a, a speed sensor back here. And I'm actually playing with the idea of using the original aluminum plate that sat under here, basically a skid plate, you know, and what you got on the boat, you know, you, you have this lip coming off 10 millimeter, you know, so uh, roughly four inches sticking out. And then you have um, your pump cover, it goes up in there and the pump covers pretty flush with this edge going forward. Um, so there's going to be a certain amount of room right here that that um, trim control, you know, it has to go. So the question being, you know, build a box off of that, that um, that trim control can slip in from the inside or build an external box that you have a, an access cover on the back side, and you just take the electrical through uh, the transom. You know, those are the questions. If you build a box on the outside, I don't think it's meant to be submerged in water. So you'd have to be pretty darn watertight with the box. You know, I mean, it's it's obviously you know wires are sealed. I, I think the seals are pretty good. I just it's not. Not necessarily designed to be underwater, so um, you know that's just something that doesn't seem right. So the question is, okay, if I build a box, you know, it's either outside access or inside access, which means a hole in the transom next to the pump, and of course on the inside, you've got an intake. You can kind of see through there, you know, the ring where the intake is going to be, and I'm actually. I'm thinking I'm going to raise that back up. I'm going to make the bottom of that flush with the bottom of the hole just to get more height for mounting that motor and building a, building a carriage for those bottom mounts. You know, and if you want to understand, some people will just get rid of those mounts. I don't, I don't really like that idea. And the reason it is, is because those bottom mounts are obviously what were designed to actually carry the weight of the motor with those, those side mounts um, that went here as stabilizers, just because they're a lot softer rubber. Um, you know, you'd have a lot of movement on that motor with just the stabilizers holding the weight. So without re-engineering the wheel and making new stabilizers that are more rigid, which just rigid, you know, makes the, the boat more rigid or the, the motor more rigid mounted. You know, I don't like screwing with that either. So the way I believe this, this was designed to function 
is that the weight is centered on the motor on these bottom mounts. And then your torque, it basically pivots from that center mount, you know, on those, those softer rubber mounts. So I'm basically trying to mimic that in the boat. Well, to really be able to do that well, and not be mounted to the bottom of the keel, just in case of denting, moving your motor and, and throwing off your alignment with the, with the coupler. You know, I basically have to build something that comes down through under here, has, you know, that mount underneath it, but raised off of the floor. So that's the plan you know, get it off the floor, get some gap between it, you know, raise that intake ring, which is gonna be up then in there a bit, but people are saying that's what you need to do so you're not lodging rocks in there. You know, you get gives you a little more space. And that's fine, and doing all that, I have to raise that hole again, which means I'm not, I'm gonna have to replace metal. So, um, it would've been nice to figure that out before, but you know, if I, if I raise that thing another quarter inch, you know, um, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I think, in that zone where the, the bottom ceiling surface isn't gonna be adequate, or at least I won't be happy with it. I'll look at it when I get that, that ring re, remounted, all, all nice and level and tacked in, put the intake on, I'll see where it's at. I might get away with just filling in some of the bottom, um, but I bought some, uh, 6061 plate today, whatever. I think that's the number on the um, the grade that I needed. So I've, I've got a sheet of that that I can. I thought about just cutting out a larger square, you know, and and welding it back in, and then recutting the hole. You know, maybe make the square a couple inches wider than that hole, just to get rid of all of that. You know, obviously taller. Um, just cut it out, match it in, um, weld it from both sides, clean it up, you know, make the surfaces even, and, um, and recut the hole later in a, in a new piece. You know, it's, it's either that or fill the bottom of the hole, you know, um, at, at the bottom side of it and up the sides enough to um, raise that thing and still have a, a gasket ceiling surface that is just reasonable. So, that's the plan on that, you know, and this is all thinking ahead. I still got to weld the whole, you know, the windscreen is the next on the instructions um, and then welding the hole. Obviously a lot of work there. And I'm still gonna, I'm gonna try and jack that corner. I, you know, I'm thinking I'll just beef up these welds down here, you know, cause it's gonna pull on those tacks and they're heavy tacks. The second time I tacked all that, um, I hit them pretty hard. So I don't know, I guess when you're jacking, you can look at it. It's probably gonna bend that, that chine a little bit, you know, with the jack pushing down and, and raising up in that corner. I gotta try and fix that bend though, cause that's, it's really just looks bad. And functionally, you know, I, I can pull it up and, and get those, those two surfaces in the corner over there, you know, even. It just puts that much more pressure down on that corner. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to resolve that, so. I'm just gonna jack on that, that corner, see what I can get away with. Um, try and straighten that out a little bit. Because I don't know if I've ever shown the, the angle, but it's, you know, it's like bent up, you know, right there. It's just kind of coming up like that. You know, you get stand back and look at it, it's, it's like bam, and then flat, you know. So, you know, of course there's this whole thing here, which whatever, I think I can move that up support it, you know, put the windscreen on. Hopefully it won't warp the windscreen, you know, pulling down on it. I don't know if I'm gonna have to put a support in there or whatever to try and keep it level for the windscreen. That's another experiment I'm gonna have to deal with rather than just putting it together. Um, on this side, you know, I went to put this, this swim deck on. You know, that's that's the gap, it's like, it's close to quarter inch gap um, right in here. And that's because that bend right there is too low. So um, 
the side panel sits sits low here. It's you know, which rides on this and pushes it out. So, I mean, a good thing is this this top corner joint is pretty pretty clean, <laughs> you know. But from here down, it's it's not looking great. You know, actually, it's it's tight in here. It's just got this huge gap here because of that bend right there. So. Whatever, I mean, that's what filler metal's for. Um, you know, the, you know, when I get that, when I get the, uh, the swim deck, you know, at the right height, you know, matching these corners, so on and so forth, get that tacked on to where it's, it's level across the back and, and whatnot. Um, I don't know, you know, tacking that might actually pull that Pull that gap in. I'll just have to do it to the best I can to where, or either put some filler in that so that it's not bowing in the side of the boat. You won't see this obvious, you know, bow right back in here. You have another kind of warp panel. So I might just go ahead and fill that and then weld it. You know, it's it is what it is. You know, I I can't you know, I can't deal with that bend. I don't think trimming that's you know, I'd have to trim the whole corner. I'd have to trim this whole thing up here and this corner um, to get that to, to push over, you know, and fill that gap, you know, all the way down to there where I'm taking out the metal that's, that's actually holding it here and holding the panel out. So I'd have to trim off probably about a quarter inch all, all the way up here. You know, the problem is, start moving this over, you know, I guess I'd have to trim, well, yeah, all the way up to here. So, and the inside, because this, this whole thing would have to move, you know, to, to come over and, and fit into that panel. I don't really like that idea. I'm thinking just fill the hole and, and fill it in, you know, and then my corner's fine. And if I, if I fill that so it doesn't suck in, I shouldn't have a warp on the side of the boat. Um, so the trim control, there might, there might not be room on the inside with the intake and the engine, the exhaust is on that side and that exhaust chamber has to be shortened, you know, already just, just to fit it behind the motor. Um, so I think it's gonna be right up against that, there's just not gonna be room. So most likely it's probably just gonna be a external box with the wiring going through. From what I can tell, I guess I'll just have to build a, a waterproof, watertight box with the front, front flanged lip, um, figure out a way to secure a lid that you know I can be reasonably sure is watertight. You know, I suppose, you know, <laughs> As it gets hot and cold, you know, there can be a lot of pressure in an aluminum box, especially if the sun hits it, you know, it's going to have an air relief probably through the, the wiring grommet, you know, on the, on the inside. But, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a funky one, but I definitely wanted the trim. Um, and I, I'm not sure I can disconnect it. I mean, I could probably put it in the boat and make the boat think it's there and that it's doing its thing. You know, unless there's some other way the boat knows the trim's not working, you know. But I think it has probably has to be connected. Um, I guess I could just store it in the boat. And if I wanted to, I could hook up cables, you know, to the pump. But the way the trim works is there's an up and down arrow on the, on the handlebar. Uh, the grip controls, you just hit a button and you set the trim, you know, and it's also part of his braking system. It drops that bucket um, for like, there's a reverse lever on the left side of the, the handlebars. You pull that lever and it puts it in reverse. So that that's when the trim drops. So it's all electronic and automatic. And I think it's probably just better to put it in. So that will be an interesting, you know, mod, um, I'm hoping, you know, the box that I have to build isn't going to be wider, need to be wider than, um, so I can get that pump cover on without cutting into it. But 
if I have to trim into it to get the corner of the box to, to fit into it, I guess that's, that's the way it's going to be. Um, you know, and then trying to incorporate in some, some framework to possibly put that skid plate on. I don't know how necessary that is, but it seems to me like if you went over, you know, a rock and your pump's sticking out past that, that, the rear of that keel and weight comes down on the pump, then, you know, you're going to create some serious issues. So, I mean, they put them on the jet skis. I would think you'd want something underneath your pump, but I'll look at comments. Maybe you guys can tell me a little bit about that. I have no experience with it. Um, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there for the moment. I, you know, that's in the future. Um, I got to get good at my welding and take my time doing that. Deal with that corner first and the windscreen. And that's this weekend. I, I doubt I'm going to get any more than that done. So I'll look at comments, see if anybody's got any ideas here, you know. Um, or on engine mounts or, you know, whatever. I've, I've already seen comments that, you know, raise your, your intake, you know, up off the bottom. So it's just, you know, I'm trying to follow instructions on this build and do things the way they're, you know, people have proven they work, you know, and they, in the instructions, they have your, your pump screen even with the bottom of the UHMW because that's the setup I, I purchased was the ring mounts at, you know, even with the bottom of the boat, the, um, the, the pump screen, the intake screen, you know, bolts to the intake and it sets down in there and it's all level on the bottom with the UHMW. And they have, you know, different thicknesses of rings depending on whether you're using UHMW or not. So that that's purposely designed to to be even with the bottom of the boat but i really don't have a problem with it being higher i mean maybe i should i i don't know i mean you have a lip on the back it seems to me like you just you want to just taper it off so it's not a sharp edge to catch things and other than that i mean i'd, I'd be more worried about the pump getting hammered if you came down hard on something so um anyway don't think i have any more than that to add you know if anybody's got any comments i'll watch for them Thanks, guys.